Hello, crafty friends. My name is Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. In today's video, we'll be doing a little sheet load rewind to create six quick and easy clear cards. I hope you'll stick around to see what month we're rewinding to and see how I'm going to make the cards. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Each month, I like to stop by with a little sheet load rewind and revisit a past issue of sheet load of cards. Sometimes we leave it as is, sometimes we switch it up a little bit. Today, I'll be showing you how to turn it into clear cards. Let's go ahead and find out what month we're rewinding to today. Today, we are going to be revisiting the November 2020 sheet load of cards. This one does call for six by six paper, but don't forget you can always cut down your 12 by 12 pieces. At the end of this video, with just three pieces of six by six paper, we are gonna yield six cards. Now, as always, sheet load is a great jumping off point for you, so you can always make these cards your own. At the end of this video, I'll tell you how you can download the free printable if you would like to give these a try. But for now, let's go ahead and take a look at the main supplies I'll be using today. Here in front of me are the main supplies that you'll see me use in today's video. For my sentiment, I'm going to be using Tailored Expressions on Occasion stamp set along with the coordinating dies. For my pattern papers, I chose these three, a floral, a little dotted one and some stripes. These were sent to me by Pam P, one of my subscribers, and this paper really grabbed my attention today, so I will be using it. Thanks so much, Pam. To add a little texture later on, I'm gonna be using a dots embossing folder, and to stamp my sentiments, I decided on Gina K Designs Fresh Asparagus. I thought it brought out some of the greens in the floral pattern paper, and it would just add a nice pop of color. Now, I will also be bringing in some cardstocks and my clear cardstock, of course, for my card bases. And when I add any other tools or products, I will let you know about those as well. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! We're going to be getting started with the cutting guides page from the printable and cutting our three pieces of pattern paper per those original instructions. Now this one you do have some scraps left over and later I'll give you ideas of where I use those at. Before you make the first cut, you'll want to figure out which direction you want your pattern papers to go and then the top of your paper will get rotated so it's either on the left or right. The first cut gets made at two and three quarters, and the second one is at 1.375 or one and three eighths. That is the mark that is halfway between one and a quarter and one and a half. Now that additional piece just set to the side for now, and again, I'll show you how I use that later. Now I'm gonna take the tallest piece from the top, and I'm gonna cut two pieces that are 1.125 inches or one and an eighth inches wide. The one and an eighth inch mark is halfway between one and one and a quarter. Once I have those two pieces cut, the remaining gets cut into two pieces that are one and three quarters inches wide. And finally, the smaller strip gets cut right in half at three inches. I cut the remaining two pieces of pattern paper in the same way, making sure before I made that first cut that I knew what I wanted to be the top and bottom of my pattern paper. Once I had all of my pattern papers cut down, I brought in two pieces of white cardstock for CS1. I cut these so I had strips that were 11 inches wide by four and a half inches tall, and you'll see I do have some leftover cardstock, and I'm gonna save these for cuts or pieces that I need to cut later. 
Once I had the initial four and a half inch tall strips, I rotated them and I cut three pieces from each sheet that are three and a quarter inches wide. These will end up being the mats later for my pattern paper. Next, I brought in three pieces of clear cardstock, and I know it is kind of hard to see on camera, but I do want to show you how I cut and fold it. In the description box below, I do have a video linked where I answer some questions about the clear cardstock material I like to use, so make sure to check that out if you're curious. Now this does pretty much cut just like cardstock and fold like it. I cut my piece in half to four and a quarter inches wide by 11 inches tall, and then I just use the edge of my cutter to help me fold it in half. Now you can bring in a bone folder to help reinforce that fold. I usually just do it with my fingernails. I get a lot of questions also if this stands up and the weight that I buy does. Just want to make sure that you do crease that nice and crisply. I continued cutting and folding until I had six card bases. And another thing I want to mention that is linked in the description box below is my clear card playlist. So I enjoy making clear cards and I've shared quite a few here on my channel. So I do have them all in the playlist if you want to check it out and get some more ideas for clear card stock. Since you cannot easily write on this clear material, I do want to put something inside for my personal message. I also like to hide that from the front, so I usually do this in different ways. Sometimes I put a smaller card inside, but today you'll see I'm just going to put a smaller piece of cardstock that will be hidden from the front. So with some of those leftover scraps from CS1, I cut pieces that were slightly smaller than the three and a quarter by four four and a half inches and I just kept cutting until I had six of those one for each card next we're going to cut our CS2 circles now the original sheet calls for two inch circles and that is what shows here on the front of my sketch now what you can do if you print these at hundred percent you can bring in your dies and kind of line them up with the printout to see which circle might work best now you'll see the one that I chose is a little bit bigger than the one on this sketch and that's because the sentiment I want to use hello friend fits much better on this larger size. Now to cut my circles out so we can see that beautiful pattern paper behind the circle, I will be using some scraps of vellum. I just took these off screen with that die and cut out six and I also went ahead and used the dots embossing folder on each of these. I just like the little added texture that gives the circle. While I was in the mood for die cutting, I went ahead and took the Hello Friend coordinating die and I used some white scraps to cut out six of those. Now you'll see here I also kept the negative of one and that is going to be to set up a little template in our Misty. Now the great thing about the Misty is you can set your sentiment up once and just keep stamping in that same exact spot. Because I'll be using a red rubber stamp, I am going to take the mouse pad out of my Misty and to figure out where my template goes, I'm going to stamp that just somewhere in the background on the grid or the background of my Misty. Now once I have that stamped, and it doesn't have to look great, I'm going to bring in my cardstock negative and I'm going to use some painter's tape, line up my negative so it gives a nice even border around the Hello Friend stamp, and before I place both pieces of tape down, I am going to go ahead and clean off the Hello Friend just so I don't get it on the back of any of my die cuts, which then I might get onto my fingers and onto another one. Now once that is in place, I can take one of my die cuts, put it down in that opening, and then all I have to do is ink up my stamp and you'll see there how nicely that stamps with a white border. Now to get the remaining five, I'm just going to do that same thing for each of those and I just love how easy this makes it. I will keep that negative for future die cuts or stamps of this same sentiment. Now we're going to put together our sentiment focal points. Off camera, I put some thin foam tape onto the back of each sentiment. I just thought this would give some added dimension to the card and help the sentiment stand out from that vellum circle. 
I continued putting these together off screen until all six were done and then it was time to put together my little card kits. That is what I call when I put together the pieces of pattern paper for each card. You'll see here that I'm going to grab from left to right one of each of the patterns in the different sizes. Now for the second one I'm going to choose the floral for the upper left but the stripes will be the upper right. You'll see here then that those first two cards do look different and when you mix and match them like this all of your cards will actually end up looking different. I go ahead and I just finish this process. I will let you watch it in case you want to choose your pattern papers along with me. Once we have all of our pattern papers matched up, we're going to start putting these onto their CS1 mat. To do this, I like to start with piece A in the upper left, which for this card it is the floral, and I'm going to adhere it so there's an eighth of an inch on the top and left. Then I'm going to take piece B, which in this case is the stripes, and it's going to go in the upper right with an eighth of an inch border on the top and right. And finally, piece C, which is a kind of the orangey peach dots on this card will go at the bottom. I just try to make sure that I have the eighth of an inch border all the way around those bottom edges and if they don't meet up exactly there in the middle no big deal because later that meeting place is going to be covered up by the sentiment focal points. I continue putting all of these matted pieces together until all six are ready and for us to move on. Now we're going to get those pieces put onto the front of our clear card bases. I just use my ATG and I do my best to center this on the card front. Now to make it a little easier to see the edges of the clear card base, I like to bring in a piece of graph paper or just something from the recycle bin. And it helped a lot on this one because there's a larger border on the edge when I had the grids on there. Now for the inside, I'm going to take one of the smaller pieces of cardstock, put adhesive on the back, and then I'm going to place it behind the piece we just put on the front of the card base with the adhesive up toward me. I'm going to center it in that area and then bring the back of the card base to it. That way I ensure when the card is closed, I cannot see that inner white one from the front and my personal message will be hidden. I continue this same process for all six cards. Now let's get those focal points on the card fronts. Now this is one of those places where you could move your focal point around to where you would like it. I think mine looks best where I have a little bit of the vellum hanging off the left side of that front matted piece. Now to put these in place, I'm going to be bringing in my art glitter glue in my fine tip bottle and I'm only going to put glue behind the area that has that sentiment hiding it from the front. I let these dry for about five minutes and while I was off screen, I added some strips of pattern paper to the inside to help use up some of the scraps and I also added some gems on the vellum circle. Here are some close up looks at the finished cards and those finishing touches. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together this set of six clear cards. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now let me tell you how you can download the printable for free. As always, I do ask that you are a subscriber to my channel before you download the free printable. We do just go on the honor system here. I don't make you email me proof or sign up for a mailing list. Please just make sure before you click on the link which I'll tell you where it's at here in just a minute, that you have already clicked on the subscribe button. It's free, it's quick, it's easy. You are gonna find the link to the November 2020 sheet load of cards all the way at the bottom of my description box below. Below the link, it will say to watch the video for a password, but you watching this far is the password.
I hope that you enjoy getting crafty with this sheet load. And don't forget, if you want to show us your sheet load and share here on YouTube, over on Instagram or TikTok, there are hashtags at the top for you to use. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.